Good morning. I might be a minute early. I didn't know when I was going to be today. I've had a few people in and out of the yard already and a couple more coming. So I just uh, probably be a little bit brief today and, and hopefully be somewhat on time again after this before too much longer. We finish the story of Stephen today in chapter 7 of Acts from verse 44 to the end. And Stephen is still, as we begin reading today, still talking with the, with the council, reminding them of, of their history. He's talked of Abraham and of Moses, and now he, he uh, speaks a little bit of Moses, but then you know, he reminds them, you know, Moses didn't lead the people into the promised land. Joshua did. And from the time of Joshua until the time of David, uh, you know, they, they worshiped in the tent of the tabernacle. You know, it was, the, and, and when David became king, it was, you know, he, he wanted to build a temple for God. And God said, you know, I don't live in earthly dwellings, you know. I live in your hearts and in your lives, and I don't live in earthly dwellings. And so David wasn't the one that built the temple, but David's son Solomon. Uh, found favor with God and was a wonderful leader. And it's, it's interesting to read Solomon's story or the story of Solomon, just as it is of David and Moses and, and so many of the leaders of the Jewish people. But it was Solomon that built the, the temple. But uh, Stephen says, Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made with human hands, as the prophet says, and then he quotes from Isaiah 66, Heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? And you, you think about that. How do we build a house for God? You know, uh, we've got churches all over. And, and you know, sometimes people say, well, it's, it's God's house, you know. And, but, you know, the church isn't God's house. The church is the place where we, as God's people, gather together for worship, for fellowship, for education, for um, sometimes we feel that that's where we're closer to God. But the reality is, is that God doesn't live in that building. God is everywhere. He's in our hearts. He's in our minds. He's in nature. He's in creation. And I've had people say to me that, well, I don't need to go to church to worship God. I can worship God, you know, while I'm out hunting or fishing or whatever. And, and I've had people say, well, when we go on our Sunday morning fishing trips, we always pray before we get in the boat. And that's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that because God is in and through all places. And so when we, when we say we're going to build a church for God, you know, uh, in, in some ways we're right. We are building a church for God. But, but God doesn't live in that church. So we can't, when we leave the doors of the church, you know, we don't just leave God behind. I mean, hopefully God goes with us, you know. And... Um, so, so God is reminding us and everybody, you know, through the prophets and through the, through the book that, um, you know, we can't contain him that way. And the last thing from Isaiah, you know, God says, did not my hands make all these things? I mean, how do we, how do we build a building? How do we do something that for, for God to live in when God is the one that created it, you know? And, and then verse 51, I, I like, it says, you stiff necked people, ha, huh? you stiff necked people circumcised in heart and I, but you're forever opposing the Holy Spirit. Stiff necked people. And we can find that phrase a couple different places in the Bible that, you know, if someone calls you stiff necked, it means that you're not willing to listen. You're not willing to you know, hear someone else's opinion. You're not willing to try something new. You know, you're so stuck in your ways that you just can't see something new. And and uh, there was one time quite a few years ago, I'd had surgery on my neck and, and I, you know, I couldn't turn my neck. So I had to turn my whole body. And, and Pastor Carol Foss that Sunday morning, it was, you know, this text was there or something. But he, when he read this stiff necked people, he looked right at me and he said, yeah, some of us are stiff necked. And, um, and I find myself there some ways, not just because of my surgery, but because of my opinions, because it's. You know, when you get something in your head, it's hard to change it. And this is the thing that Jesus was up against. It's the thing that Stephen was up against. It's, it's what we're up against today yet. You know, speaking of God's word, you know, and, and there are some who are, just as Stephen says here, forever opposing the Holy Spirit. And so he says, you know, which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? 
I mean, how many of the prophets were really welcomed? And, you know, we can read of Elijah and Elisha and Amos and, you know, all of that. I mean, they would come to the king and the king would say, hey, I don't want to listen to you. Or, you know, Bathsheba, uh, I mean, and, and other queens, you know, were uh, just so opposed to these prophets that they ran and they hid and, and you know, they had no safety net because the people don't want to hear the word of God. The people don't want to hear, and I shouldn't say just the people, because we're a part of that people today too. We don't want to hear that what we're doing is, is opposed to what God would have us doing. And just like it says here in verse 54, when they heard these things, they began in ra became enraged and gnashed their teeth at Stephan. And they drove him out of the city and they stoned him to death. And this is what happened to so many of the prophets. And this is why in the Gospels, Jeru uh, Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How we would like to cover you with a, like a, a hen covers her uh, chicks with her wings, you know, protection. But, you know, they, they weep over Jerusalem, over the Hebrews, over the, the Jewish people because of their continued rejection of the prophets. And the rejection of the prophets equals rejection of God and rejection of God's word. And, and so here, as they drive Stephan out of, this, of the city and as they begin to stone him, he says, I see the heavens open. I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand. And then he, he says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then he says, the last thing he says before, you know, he fell asleep is what my, you know, some versions say, well, he died, you know. Um, the last thing he said is, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Echoing Jesus' words from the cross, you know, don't hold this sin against them. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the love of God, filled with the desire for people to know Jesus, commended himself into Jesus' care and asked God to forgive those that took his life. Um, and the last thing it says that, you know, when he had said this, he died. You know, he, he gave up and, um, and in this stoning, it's just, you know, there, there's no mercy there. And, and it, the stoning of Stephen always reminds me of when the, when the people brought this woman caught in adultery to Jesus and they wanted to stone her. And Jesus says, let the one of you without sin cast the first stone. And, and so I think that, you know, this is something we need to think about it and remember too, when we start putting someone down, when we start to say somebody is so wrong about something, we need to remember that we are not without sin either. And we need to be careful about what we say and how we proceed um, so that we do what we do uh, with, the, with the love of Jesus in our hearts and in our minds. Um, so for today, I think we'll call that good. Uh, may God richly bless you again today as he always does.